protected. You are welcome in Jesus' name. And I pray that the Lord, God Almighty, whom we serve, will continue to fight for us in Jesus' name. Let's open our Bibles quickly this morning to the book of Job. The book of what? Job. We're going to start from chapter 1. And I know that many of us have read this part before, but we're going to read it again this morning together. And I will title this message, When You Are Knocked Down. Let me hear you say it again. When? Let me hear you say it the second time. Let me hear you say the third time. Job chapter 1. And I'm going to be reading from verse 1. Job chapter 1 from verse 1. Now, lots of us have read about the book of Job. Many of us may never really have had the great understanding. But I pray that the Lord God Almighty will give you great understanding this morning in Jesus' name. I pray that the word of God that you're going to be reading will bring forth light unto you in Jesus' name. And that word of God will also bring forth deliverance in the name of Jesus. The word of God Almighty will set every captive free in Jesus' name. Let's open to that book of Job chapter 1 from verse 1. The Bible tells us that there was a man in the land of whose, whose name was Job. And that man was perfect. He was also upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. Verse 2, let me hear you read verse 2 now. Let me hear you now. And I'm, I'm going to read verse 3. His substance was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camel and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she asses and a very great household. So that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. Praise the name of the Lord. This Bible passage is talking to us about Job. Many of us have read this Bible passage before with very, very little understanding of the depth of it. When you are knocked down. Now, the first chapter there gave us an introduction of who this person was. The Bible tells us that Job is a perfect and upright man. Is a what? Perfect and it means that his yes is yes. His no is no. He's not an anky panky person. He does not tell you, I am coming and he is going. Or I am going and he is coming. He does not tell you A and it is B. He does not tell you yellow and it is white. A perfect and an upright Man, praise the name of the Lord. Now let's go to verse 2 again. The Bible tells us, and there was born unto him, what? Seven sons and three, meaning that he had children, correct? And seven sons and what? Three, praise the name of the Lord. The Bible now goes to verse 3. It tells us again that his substance, what he had, when you talk about money, what he had, when you talk about wealth, Let's read verse 3 together, everybody now. A substance where 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camel and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she axes and a very great household. So that this man was the greatest of the men of the east. Praise the name of the Lord. Beloved, if you want to look at the Bible evaluation compared to today's economy, the Bible tells us that he has how many camels? Can anybody tell us how many camels did he have? How many camels? 3,000 camels. When you are knocked down. He had what? 3,000 camels. If you want to compare that to the economy of now, it means that he had 3,000 limousines. Because the camels will move a long time. They will go very far. You will be, in fact, when he's on it, his servants will be on some of them. Am I right? And they will go in the desert for a long... He had 3,000 of them. How does he feed them? How does he keep them? He has men servants, male, female servants. The Bible records that he's the greatest man in the east of the den. Now let's jump 
to verse 13 of that book called Job chapter 1, verse 13. Let's read it together now. Everybody, let's go now from verse 13. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them. Verse 15 now. And took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Verse 16 now. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, the fire of God is falling from heaven and had burned up the ship and the servants and consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Verse 17 with a louder voice now. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camel and they were carried away. Yeah, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword and I only escaped alone to tell thee. Verse 18 now, while he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house and it fell upon the young men and they are dead and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Praise the name of the Lord. Let somebody shout a loud hallelujah. Now, you will see that how many calamities happen in one day? Everything happened in the same day, isn't it? The camels were destroyed. That was the equivalent of all his properties and his cars. Then the last one that you saw there was that his seven children in one day got what? They all died. They all died. Beloved, when you are knocked down, what do you do? When you are knocked down, how do you react? When you are knocked down, what is God saying? When you are knocked down, what do you even say in your heart? When you are knocked down, how do you feel? When you are knocked down, do you begin to contemplate to kill yourself? When you are knocked down, what is in your heart? And I pray that the Lord God Almighty this morning will give you great understanding in Jesus' name. I said the Lord will give you great understanding in Jesus' name. Now, one major fact I want us to understand here is that every time in life, men could be knocked down. Women could be knocked down. Great men could be knocked down. Just like Job was knocked. And if you search throughout the old Bible, you discover that when you are knocked down, you have not been knocked dead. You have only been knocked down, isn't it? That means there's surely that you are coming back up. Surely you are what? Coming back up. But what are your reactions? What are your statements at that time? What do you say? Remember that in that same book of Job, the wife told Job, he says, go and curse God and what? That is the person that should help you when you are knocked down is the person beside you, isn't it? Should be your spouse. Am I right? Should be your spouse, correct? But it tells you, go and cause God and what? And die. Because if only you, all this calamity has come unto you, then you must be cursed. Just go and cause God and just die and let God kill you. And God, let God what? Kill you. Now, the question is, what do you say? When you are knocked down. What are the words that come out of your mouth. When you are knocked down. What are your reactions. When you are knocked down. Beloved I want to give you. Wonderful. Um, good encouragement this morning. That being knocked down. Is not being knocked dead. Now tell somebody. 
being knocked down. Is not being knocked dead. And when you are knocked out, you have not, you have, you have not, you have not, you have not, you have not, you have, you have not, you have not, uh, how do you say, you have not been knocked out finally to, to, to die. You need to have that good and great understanding at the back of your mind. Praise the name of the Lord. Every time we talk about the wonderful story of Joseph, that Joseph had a good dream, like you and I have a good dream. Some of us have a wonderful dream. I say, well, when I get to the land of the United Kingdom, I'm going to do A, I'm going to do B, I'm going to do C, I'm going to do D. And you counted it up to Z. And right now, you have not started to do A. And you're asking yourself, are my costs? Is something wrong with me? What is happening to myself? What is happening to my marriage? Is my marriage cost? Or what is happening to my children? Are my children cost? Is, has somebody spoken evil to me? Read what happened to Job there. Job had a series of calamity. Everything the Bible records happened in one day. In one what? Day. And the Lord Almighty delivered him out of it. Let's now jump. Let's go to Job. Chapter 42. Let's go to Job 42. Are we there? 42. Let's read verse 10. Everybody will read verse 10 together. Job 42, verse 10. What does the Bible say there? Let's go now. I want to go. Okay, let's read it together for those that didn't get there. Let's read with a loud voice, understanding what we are reading. Are we ready now? Let's go together now. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Now, beloved, I have jumped from Job chapter 1 to Job chapter 42. Did you hear what I said? Go and read all the afflictions that went through him. Go and read all the obstacles that he faced. Go and read all the mountains that they passed through. Go and read all the valleys that they passed through. Go and read how his wife also cost him. Are we getting what I'm talking about? Now, what I'm saying here is that there was a journey. There was what? But the Bible record one great thing. He says, and Job prayed. Let's read it again. Let's read it again one more time. Let me say it again. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. When he prayed for his friends. Let's stop there. <laughs> Can you pray for your friend? When the counsel says, pack your load and get out. Can you do it? In fact, when the home office writes you and say, we give you 10 days to pack your load and get out of the United Kingdom. Can you pray for your neighbor who has a British passport? <laughs> Some people are laughing, isn't it? That is what happened to Job. Now, let me tell you the, 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 the mystery behind it is that what do you say when you are knocked down? How do you react when you are knocked down? What are the things that come out of your belly when you are what? Knocked down. Beloved, what you say, what you do, how you react, matters also to God. It does what? Matters to God. Those Hebrew brothers, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were put into the fairy furnace. They even said, God, if God would not even answer, we will not bow to your God, you Nebuchadnezzar. They, they told him right to his face. I'm very sure many of us, if they were to tell us today, that the queen said, you need to come to Piccadilly Circus and bow down to those horses that were there. Or is it, is it, is it, it say, come and bow down there. And, and you say, no, I'm a Christian. Say, well, if you're, if you're not going to bow down, we're going to revoke your British passport. And we're going to throw you into fire. Some people will go and bow. Am I right? Because what they say is that your British passport or not. Take it. We are not going to what? Bow! And they had every right 
to complain. Because number one, they were slaves in the first place. Captured and brought there. Now you want them to bow to your own God. They have come from a country to another country. Now you are saying they must bow to your own God. They had every right to complain to God. God, after they took us from in captivity into this country, now this one is wanting us to bow. They have every right to complain. But right there in the fire, the Lord showed up. The Lord what? Now listen. When Nebuchadnezzar was talking to them, there was nothing like any lawyer coming. There was no lawyer coming to Nebuchadnezzar's palace. Am I right? So they made the judgment. At the time of putting and bounding them, they bound them, there was no lawyer coming. When they were putting them and preparing the fire, there was no lawyer coming. They put them into the fire. There was no lawyer coming. And God was seeing all this step by step. Step by step. When they put them into the fire, then God showed up. Tell somebody, God will show up in your matter. Say it with fire. Let me hear you now. God showed up at the very point when they have entered into the fire. Beloved, a lot of us say a lot of things, but when you are knocked down, you are supposed to be positive. You're supposed to be what? You're supposed to be positive. You, words that come out of your mouth must be edifying. The words that come out of your mouth must be great, must be able to deliver you. Yes, the doctors have said yes, you can get nothing. Let us go and prepare your will in the next four, five, six months. You're going to die. We don't think you will survive. Look at your blood. Everything is going down. Go and prepare your will. Mr. Man, go and prepare your will. We've told you, and it's a, prof a, a professor of whatever, whatever they call them, a GCCA, a CCNA, whatever name, qualification he has, and the seven or eight professors gathered together, they checked it. They said, no, I don't think he can survive. He's just, let's just give him three weeks or four weeks. What do you say? What do you say? What are your reactions? Beloved, when you are knocked down, you are not knocked out and you are not knocked dead. He that is knocked down can still stand up, isn't it? If he will call upon the name of the Lord. He that is knocked down can still say, yes, let me withdraw my legs because I know my God is alive and he is able to do all that I ask him. Beloved, when you are knocked down, don't begin to murmur. Don't begin to say, well, the Lord brought me to the United Kingdom. He gave me all this. He did this for me. And now this man is trying to steal it. You begin to cry. You begin to murmur. You begin to say everything you can say to God. In fact, you, some of you will say, God, if you don't do it within the next 10 minutes, I will just kill myself. When you are knocked down. See, everything that happened to Job, all the calamities happened in one day. Go and read the Bible very well. And many Bible scholars who know the Bible in and out, they said it looks like a mystery. That that cannot happen to one person in a day. That that is just too much of a calamity. Bible scholars decide that, oh, they don't feel that was written. They, they, they just cannot understand themselves. And up to today, if you want to do a detailed research, you see that the book of Job it is there to tell you and I that when you are knocked down, you are not knocked out. You are not what? Knocked out. Yes, because a boxer goes into the ring, they begin to fight in round one. The guy opposing it knocked him down and he still stood up. He may still win the fight, isn't it? He could still what? He could still win the fight. It doesn't mean that he's knocked off. The question here is that as a Christian, what do I say? The words you say is what I'm talking about here now when you are knocked down. The words you say is what I am talking about. What do you say? What comes out of your belly? 
And those things you say is what God uses. Look at what the Bible says there. It says, and Job turned, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his what? Friends. And the Bible says, also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Before. The Bible says that twice as much as he had what? Before. Now, let's understand that. Let's go to verse 12 of that same Job 42. Job 42, verse 12. Let's read from there. From verse 12. Let's read together. Are we there now? So the Lord blessed the later hand of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camel and a thousand yoke of oxen and a thousand she axes. Now, go to, if you go back to Job chapter 1, go and read in verse 3, all the substance of Job were half of this, isn't it? They were half of this. Now, let's go to verse 13. He says, he had also seven sons and three daughters. Meaning that if the other ones were alive, he would have had 14, isn't it? We'll have 14. So, we'll have 14 sons and maybe uh, six daughters. Let's go ahead now, verse 14. And he called the name of the first, Jemima, and the name of the second, Kezia, and the name of the third, Karen Hapok. So, the Bible mentioned the name of the girls. <laughs> did you hear me? The Bible did what? Mentioned the name, and you will see that in his later part, the Bible didn't mention the name of the girls. Because the Bible was trying to tell you that, look, he actually had these children and they had names. Let's go ahead now. Verse 15. And in all the land where no women found so fair as the daughters of Job and their father gave them inheritances among their brethren. Meaning that the girls that he lost in the initial instance were not as fair as the ones he later had. That's what the Bible is trying to tell us. That even the ones he had before were not as. And they said, there's no one in the land that were found. No woman was found as fair as the daughters of Job. The Bible is explicit in giving us a detail description in this place. Now what does the Bible say in verse 16? It says after this lived Job an hundred and forty years and he saw his sons and his sons' sons even for generation. Meaning that this calamity could have happened to him when he was seventy. <laughs> the Bible tells us that he was 140 years when he died, isn't it? I'm saying that this calamity could have happened at what? 70, thereabout. And at that 70, all his children, from Bible scholars, I will tell you that none of them will have been less than 16. Because the girls were eating and drinking in their elder brother's house. Meaning that they were not young, correct? And he lost those kind of children in one day. In one. And the Bible could tell us again that he even left inheritances for the daughters among the brethren. Lift your right hand to the heavens. And you cry loud and clear. Say, every power that has knocked me down. You are a liar. Jesus! Aha! Oh yes! Aha! 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 In Jesus' name we pray. Now, beloved, I want to strengthen you. 
Now the Lord God Almighty is your strength. And he's the one that can uphold you in the days when you are knocked down. Now, every man, every woman will have a day when they are knocked down. Do you agree with me? Do you agree with me? Every man, every woman will have a day when they are knocked down. The question is that when you are knocked down, what do you do? How did you react? How were you able to compose yourself? How were you able to say, yes, I know that my Redeemer lived? If the devil knew that if he killed Jesus and they hang him on the tree, on the, on, on the cross, he will save all hell of us and will be calling upon Jesus. He won't kill Jesus, isn't it? He will not. He will not. He will not. If the devil even know, those that conspired against Daniel, they put Daniel in the lion's den. If they knew that the lions would not bite him, they would not have done it. The enemy will make a mistake concerning you. I said the enemy will make a mistake concerning you in the name of Jesus. Beloved, when we are talking about this, we are saying that the God you serve is much more than able. Is much more than what? Able to drag you up again, even when you are what? Knocked down. Now, let me tell you one thing. It does not matter what anybody says. It does not matter what any unbeliever or any believer says. What matters is what the Bible says. What matters is what, what the Bible says. It doesn't even matter what the economy says anyway. What matters is what the Bible says. What does the Bible say concerning you? What does it say concerning your situation? What does the Bible say concerning the situation that is facing you right now? That you're feeling that, well... I think I should just go and kill myself. Beloved, let me tell you one thing. There are different classification of murderers. And all murderers shall find themselves in the lake of fire. And that is hell. You will not find yourself there in Jesus' name. One of the classification of murderers is those that kill themselves. Or those that help somebody to kill himself. They are also what? <laughs> Murderers. Unfortunately, many of us say, well, he's in pain. He's in pain. No, 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 no. If you help somebody to kill him or herself, you are classified as a murderer too. And if you kill yourself, you are classified as what? Now, the reason why you are classified as a murderer is because you kill yourself. You do not have the power to give life, isn't it? Can anybody give life here? That power has been given to the king of kings and the lord of all. And so nobody has the power to what? To take his or our own life. Or take any other person's life. Hence, if you do that because you are knocked down and you want to kill yourself, the Bible tells us that it is an express road to hellfire. There will be no need of judgment. The demons will just take the person into the hottest, cold place of fire. And I pray that none of us will do that in Jesus' name. Now, it does not matter how long you have been in your tunnel. There is a light at the end of your tunnel. It does not matter how long you have been in the sickness. Our God is much more than able to take you out of that sickness. It does not matter what the economy says about your business. The Lord can change the economy because of your own business. It does not matter what your family says about you. Not being married, about you, not having children. It doesn't matter. But the God whom you serve is much more than able. Is much more than what? Able to deliver you and to set you free. Now, beloved, I want to tell you again that whatever man, whatever woman, whatever the economy, whatever the people have said concerning you, when you are knocked down, it doesn't matter. Tell somebody, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Only the word of God matters. It's only the word that matters. It doesn't matter what anybody says. I remember a man who came to a mountain of fire 
He doesn't live in the United Kingdom, but he came here and they gave him a test. The result of his test was that go and prepare your house, you're going to die. So he decided, okay, let me go back to Africa where I came from. At least they've told me in London, isn't it, that I should go and prepare my house and I'm going to die. He, because he now knows he's going to die, so he begins to move around. You know what I mean? He says, well, they gave me in three months anyway. Just take me here, take me there, take me there. He had this kind of message. Now, no. Our God is much more than able to do much more than you can imagine. Our God is much more than able to deliver even at the point of death. He's able to deliver. Let me tell you, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they did something that I will tell you. If the queen of England were to tell you and I today to go and bow to one shrine, either at Piccadilly Circles or Russell Square or in Regent's Park, let's go and bow there. Some of you will say, let her go away. And if they write you a letter in the house, say, well, we give you 14 days. If we don't do that, we will, we will, we will withdraw your passport. We know that you are a descent of Africa. We will take you back there. Some of you will say, is it not to bow in Regent's Park? Let me just bow, isn't it? Am I right? So is it not to bow? I'll just bow. Then nobody sees me. I'll just go back to my house and enjoy myself. Why should you want to take my wonderful British passport? Am I correct? These guys decided that even if God do not show up, we will die. Did you hear what I said? They were what? That is the ways we need Christians to be now. Even if God decides not to deliver us, we will die with it. And let me tell you the truth. The same thing happened to Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas in the prison, they took them to the inner, inner of the prison. And you discover that the way they took them there, they prayed, they sang, the Holy Ghost came down, fine. But at least it broke everything. The head of the place shook. A lot of us will say, well, can those kind of miracles still happen now? Yes, they can happen. Yes, they can what? They can happen. I remember the story of that brother that I normally tell us here. When they deported him and took him back to Africa, as he was landing there, they faxed something from Heathrow Airport to where he was going that he has a rape charge. They should bring him back. Somebody they were deporting. They said he has a rape charge. Bring him back, bring him back, bring him back. But of course, he was a Christian. He, I heard he was just praying. And the brothers were praying for him in his church also. Say, oh Lord, they should not deport him. Oh Lord, bring him back. Oh Lord, this. They brought him back. Say, he has a rape charge. He has to answer that one first. Maybe he should go to the jail first. So that after that jail, they will now deport him. Do you understand me? So they didn't want to let him after he's in the plane. So when he arrived in Africa, the people in Grenoble, Say they've seen the facts. They push him back again. <laughs> Raise the name of the Lord. They push him back. Beloved, if he killed himself, like the other brother that killed himself in the plane. Did you hear about that one? He killed himself in the plane because they were taking him out. If he felt that because he's knocked down, he's knocked out finally. They, because they're deported, you're killing yourself. Is one of them fought and fought and fought. And I think the chains that they, he, that one collapsed and also died. Or because of what? what? How do you react? Are you not saying that I know my God? He is much more than able to do much more than I can imagine. I know that if he's taking me there, the Bible says, wherever the souls of my feet shall turn upon, I will possess it. The Bible says, when I decree a thing, it shall be what? Established unto me. The Bible says, for with God nothing shall be what? Impossible. The Bible says, behold, I have the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard? For me, he, he forgot all those Bible scriptures he heard in church. They forgot all those and they just killed themselves. But the other brother, they took him. He landed there. They just said, yeah, come back. It was when they came back here, when they began to do the investigation, they discovered that it was wrong. It was false. And they had to give him a permanent residence. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. What 
do you do when you're knocked down? What do you do when you are what? Knocked down. You know, sister told me the other time, say, Pastor, I'm going to leave here. I don't like UK, this and that. And she just left back to Africa. I said, don't worry. If you go back, it doesn't matter. The Lord God Almighty can strengthen you. The Lord can do lots of things. <laughs> While she was there. I said, but make sure that you are faithful because our God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Not casually seek him. He doesn't reward casual seekers. He will just, he will just give you, he will give you the bottom of the pot. But those that diligently seek the Lord, he rewards them. So while she was there in Africa, one guy came and said, hello, I want to marry you. And the guy married him. I married her. And the guy has a British passport. <laughs> That's somebody that was here. No paper, nothing. He's, raw, he's nothing. And decided, well, I'm going to go. And the person who was married had a British So automatically, she, could, she had the access to what? If she had killed herself here. If she had decided that I'm nobody. The whole heavens are closed against me. She has used her mouth to run down her own destiny. Now, the question is, what do you say about your current situation? Are you prophesying positive things to yourself? Are you saying that I am coming out of it? Even though the devil knocked me down. Even though the devil wants me dead. But I am what? Coming out. Tell somebody, I am coming out. Shout it with fire. Shout it with fire. Beloved, I can continue to tell you because the Bible says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, the thought of what? Peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Let everybody write it down in their book. Jeremiah 29, 11. And you must know this word of head, of heart. You must make it by heart. You must say it. Say it. If, oh, you must say it day and night. Jeremiah 29, 11. Let's say it together now. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected hand. Beloved, I want to tell you again that the Lord has a great thought for you. Now, the thoughts you are having in your heart, it becomes a stronghold. Do you know that? I used to know a, a, a sister. That sister was very, very, very nice lady. I used to know her in Aquaibom State. When we go into a shop to buy anything, if you want to buy a two milkshake, she will just give you an additional one. If you go there to buy this, she will always give you. So every time we all go there, in fact, when we don't want to buy, we will still go there. <laughs> Do you understand me? And everybody goes there, we say hello to her. But one day she told me something. She says, Do you know I have only one daughter? And she always thinks that that her daughter will die. She always said it. She always thought about it. That is only one daughter I have. Oh, I don't think. Oh, she asked very negative. Then I wasn't a pastor. So I didn't have enough encouragement to give her. <laughs> Do you understand me? Then it became very, very clear in my eyes. One day she came again and I saw her. She was so lean and she was so light. She was so lean. She was, everything was up. I didn't see her for a long time. And she told me that she lost her daughter. I said, why should you have? Why? Because you have been having the thoughts in your head all the time. You have been what? Having the thoughts. Having the thought. Having killed the thought. Let the thought die. When the thought comes to you, you say, it's a lie. My daughter will not die. She will live to declare the works of the Lord in the land of the living. Devil, you are a liar. Say to yourself, if the thought come 30 times, say it 30 times. In fact, say it 60 times. Do you understand what I'm saying now? When it is, yes, as I'm walking now, what if the deport me. You will tell yourself, I will not be deported. Devil that is speaking to me. Because every time you have that thought in your heart, there is a spirit talking to you. And once you think like that, say, hmm, 
what if as I want to jump on this rail, I fall down? Immediately that thought comes. Stop and say, I will not fall. Do you understand, man? And that is what is making we Christians to be failing sometimes. Sometimes we are successful. Sometimes we are failing because the thoughts of our hearts are not clear and pure. You need to begin to take charge of the thoughts of your heart. Why can't they give you British passport? Why can't you be the one that will be getting the good? Why can't you be? Why are you thinking of evil to yourself? Say, so, well, I lost my car. I lost my job. And you see now the mortgage is going and they want to collect the house. So, am, I not going to, am I going to be living outside? You are still living in the house, isn't it? You are already thinking of living where? What are you supposed to say? You begin to lay your hands on your house. This is my house. If it is 177 or 176, you put it there. You speak to your house. Yes, because the devil has done, he has collected A, B, C, D from you. It doesn't have the last say. Tell somebody, the devil does not have the last say over my life. Say it with clear voice. Let me hear you now. Say it clear. Let me hear you now. Beloved, I will tell you again that the devil knows that you know God. He has a limit. The devil is not everywhere at every time. Did you hear what I said? He does, he's not what? He's not everywhere at. And he knows that when you call down fire, oh, fire will come. He knows that when you speak the word, it will be so. But he will not allow you to speak the word. He will begin to make your heart to ramble. To rumble, to be thinking of the things that are not of any good. And when your thoughts begin to move like that, you are thinking of it, you, you thought about it today. You thought about it the following day. You thought about it the next day. You thought about it every time. You are making it a stronghold. A what? A what? Stronghold. Then it becomes very tough to break. When the thought comes to you, that hey, will this disease not kill me like this? You bind it. Did you hear what I said? You what? Bind it. Let the doctor say everything they want to say. Like the story of the man I was telling you, when they told him to prepare his house, you are going to die. He heard this kind of message and four months down the line, he's not dead. He's looking at himself. Five months, he's not dead. Six months, he's not dead. One year after that, he came back for medical checkup again. Ah, he said, are you still alive? They are wondering because they brought out his record. They checked. We wrote four months or three months. How come you are here? He came even the following year again. And this man was the one that bought one of our bosses a mountain of fire for us. What I'm telling you is that when the devil had given a satanic prophecy or a demonic medical clinical prophecy, whatever English it is, so long as it's from the hospital, and you accept the prophecy, and you begin to carry it around, don't you see, brother, the doctor said, in fact, some people carry their death certificate around, don't you see, they said I'm going to die very soon, don't you see, then looking for people to, to, to celebrate with you, we are not going to celebrate with you, because you will not die, I said because you will not die, I said because you will not die, I remember the sister that brought her paper. They gave her 14 days to, le to leave the country. I said, yeah, so what does that matter? I said, Pastor, hey, they gave me 14 days to leave this country. Uh, and, and I said, so, so what, what, what does it matter? Do you want to leave? Tell me, yes or no. Do you want to leave? She was not even sure. I said, I, I don't want to go. She couldn't tell me. Do you want to leave? Tell me. She couldn't say. She was shaking saying it. Beloved, I thank God for that. Sister. By the time I said, okay, go. I told her, I said, kneel down here. Show your, paper, show your letter to God. Show your letter to God. And give God the time. Say, within the next, I want, you know, they wrote her back. She brought the second letter. In fact, I, th I think I made a copy. They wrote her back saying that, well, we're going to consider your case. Let it be holding and hanging. I mean, they just left it like that. Beloved, what 
is that thing that has knocked you down. And you are thinking, well, I'm not going to get up. I'm thinking, well, that is the end for me. I'm thinking, well, there's nothing that can happen again. You are getting up in Jesus' name. I say you are getting up in Jesus' name. I say you are getting up. I say you are getting up. 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 Beloved, as a member of Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministry, we expect you to be as bold as a lion. As what? Bold as a lion. When the doctor brings it to you, you should tell the doctor, no, I reject it. This is not for me. I'm a child of God. And I will not have this disease. Beloved, what you say will be. Job 22, 20 says, Thou shall also decree a thing. And it shall be what? Established unto thee. What you decree will be established. And I pray that the Lord Almighty will give you great understanding in Jesus' name. Now, let me tell you one thing. Victory is yours on every side. If you have God by you. Wait, let's say again. Victory is what? Yes. When you have God on your side. Once you know that God is, ah, oh, victory is mine. The, but the devil will try to make you believe that he has no limitation. Because he stole your car, he stole your house, he stole this one, he, he scattered your marriage. He tells you, it makes you to feel that I can do anything to you anyway. It makes you to feel that he doesn't, he doesn't have any limitation. Satan has limitation. He has what? It also makes you to believe that it does not miscalculate. Satan miscalculates. What did I say? It does what? It miscalculates. If not, Jesus Christ, it wouldn't allow Jesus Christ to die, isn't it? If not, it wouldn't allow Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to go into that what? Fairy furnace. If not, it wouldn't allow Daniel to go into that den of the lion. So, Satan will miscalculate concerning you in Jesus' name. I say it will miscalculate concerning you. Now, the devil cannot play the blood of Jesus. Oh, that's yes, again. The devil cannot what? He can't do it. He cannot. He cannot do it. He can't do it. All the things that we do here in the house of God, the devil can't do it. So you have an edge over what the devil has proclaimed over you. You have an edge. The devil also cannot be at every place at the same time. He cannot do what? Everywhere at the same because the Bible says what? He walketh around, seeking whom he may devour. He walks around. He walks around. He moves around. Sometimes you can see him in uh, Palestine. You see a lot of war, isn't it? Sometimes you just see him in somewhere else. We know that on 9-11, he entered America that day. Correct? He doesn't. He doesn't. He's not everywhere at that time. He's just at one place. He moves around, seeking whom he may... That's what the Bible tells us. The devil does not know everything. Let me say it again. The devil does not what? Let me hear you say it again. Do you now, the devil cannot claim God's promises. He can't claim them. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's another one. He can't claim it because you are the one that has been given the authority and the power to claim those things. I shall not die but live. The devil cannot claim that word. You are the one that can claim it. The devil also is always frightened when the children of God stand up and begin to pray. Is what? He shivers. When the children of God say, well, well, let us pray now. Immediately they say, stand up and pray. And you stand up to pray. It begins to what? Shake. It begins to shake. So it is possible for you to frighten the devil attacking you. Wait, that's again. It is possible for you to what? To frighten. So I want to tell you that don't be what? Discouraged. And let me tell you why I can say that is that every time you discover that when you want to pray and you want to stand up to pray, you are very tired, isn't it? You are always very tired. Say, let's stand up and pray. Some people are very weak and tired. It's because the devil does not want you to do what? To pray. He doesn't want you to do what? He does not want you to pray. He's always looking for you to be weary, to be weak, to be like that, to be feeling down. 
discarded this you know he wants your heart to be upside down he doesn't want you to do anything at all in fact he wants to be feeling regret to be mournful to be downcast he wants you to be your heart to just be there and all the time you just be mm, mm. you be saying some things you be having the thoughts and you be making those kind of sighs instead of you to stand up and what I know that the Lord Almighty will strengthen you in Jesus' name. So tell somebody, I am not knocked down. Because I'm coming up. Because I'm getting up. Let all eyes be closed. I want you to close your eyes now. For the Bible has given us a lot to say. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot say the kingdom of God. I want you to begin to speak to the Lord. But adventure... You have decided that, well, you want to kill yourself. But eventually you decided that, well, I'm going to take it like that. The devil has defeated me, so. But you have not surrendered your life to Christ. The Bible says, if we confess our sins, it's faithful and just to forgive us. And also to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I want you to open your mouth now and begin to talk to the Lord. Now, Lord, I have tried it by myself. I have used my own heart to be thinking I can come out of this problem. I have thought I can do it myself. I need you. Lord, forgive me. Open your mouth and begin to ask for forgiveness of sins. Now, Lord Jesus, forgive me from my sins. Let my sin not end my prayers. Lord, forgive me that I, I know that I want to be with you. Lord, forgive me. I want to be born again. And I want that when I begin to pray, that I will have answers to my prayers. Lord, I want you to begin to touch my life. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. A louder, amen. Father, I pray for your children that are here. I ask, O oh Lord Almighty, they have decided to come to you as sinners and they have said, Lord, have mercy. Father, Lord, we ask that you have mercy upon us in Jesus' name. That all the thoughts of our hearts, all the things that we are thinking of, Lord, we ask that you begin to remove and wipe them off in Jesus' name. Father, Lord Almighty, your word says, if we confess our sins, that you are faithful and just. Father, we have come to you in repentance. Daddy, we decree that you should be faithful and just to forgive us in Jesus' name. Cleanse us from all our unrighteousness in Jesus' name. That when we begin to pray, Daddy, you will answer us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. A louder, amen. Let's turn to our feet as we want to go into our prayers. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father Lord. Beloved, I want to tell you that while we're going to pray this morning, I want your body, your spirit, and soul to pray. Because I know that in the name of Jesus, the Lord will grant your request in Jesus' name. And I know that the Lord Almighty will lead you and hold your hands. And if you are falling and you think you can't come out, the Lord will drag you out by his own power. In the name of Jesus. Now you will cry to the Lord God Almighty. Where you are, make sure that your voice is not overshadowed by the person beside you. You will cry to him in this manner. Say, oh Lord my Father. Let me hear your voice again. I can't hear your voice. Stretch your hand. Deliver me in the name of Jesus. Aha, uh aha. -huh. Uh -huh. Stretch your hands and deliver me. Stretch your hands, deliver me. Stretch your hands, deliver me. Aha, aha, aha. In Jesus' name, we pray. Now, I want to increase the tempo of your prayer. Say, every power that has knocked me down. Oh, God, arise. Lift me up. Now, let me hear you say it again. Shout it with fire. In the name of Jesus, 
Open your mouth and call upon the Lord to lift you up. Aha, 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 aha. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Powers of my father's ass. Let me hear you louder now. Attacking my progress. Let me hear you again now. I can't hear your voice. Aha. Uh -huh. Die in the name of Jesus. Aha, 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 aha. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Jesus. You're going to open your mouth this time and you shout loud and clear. Say, every circle of darkness around my life. Let me hear you again. Aha. Shout with fire. Aha. Scatter. In the name of Jesus. Aha. 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 Jesus name we pray now you will cry loud and clear say invisible hands of darkness knocking me down now let me hear you say it again aha uh -huh. now shout it with fire I cut you off in the name of Jesus Are you cutting it? Are you cutting? Are you cutting? Are you cutting? Are you cutting? Aha, 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 aha. Cut it off. Cut it off. In Jesus' name, we pray. You will cry again loud and let's say, Every Lord of darkness. Upon any area of my life. Let me hear you again now. Now shout to the total. Aha. Uh -huh. Disappear. In the name of Jesus. Aha. Uh -huh. Aha, 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 aha. Open your mouth. Aha, aha. Oh, yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we ask, O Lord, that your mighty hands will begin to fight for us in Jesus' name. We decree, Lord Almighty, that where we have been knocked down, we are coming up in Jesus' name. Where the enemy has pushed us down, Daddy, we ask that you bring us up in the name of Jesus. Let your name alone be glorified in our lives. We ask, Lord Almighty, that this month, let it become a month of our living testimony in Jesus' name. Let it become a month of rising up in the name of Jesus. Let it become a month of testimonies and greatness in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. Lord, beginning from now, we're going to recognize your voice. We're going to speak positive things into our own lives. We're going to speak positive things into our families' lives.
We're going to speak positive things into our children's life. Thank you, everlasting Father, for in Jesus' name we pray. Now a louder, amen. Praise the name of the Lord.